Hi and welcome to this Leaving Certificate Applied Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at dimensional analysis. So as part of this video, we're going to introduce what dimensional analysis is. I'm going to give you some top tips on how to approach these questions to avoid errors. We're going to talk a little bit about our SI units. Then we're going to derive the dimensions from formula for key SI units. Uh, we're going to look at dimensional analysis for some of our main formula. So they're coming from the uniform acceleration section, circular motion section and impacts and collision section. And then we're going to look at some ordinary level exam questions that have come up to date. So that's up to September 2024. And we're going to then look at some higher level exam questions as well. So just to be aware, this video is suitable for both ordinary and higher level students. We look at both examples um, and this is something that appears on both papers. So let's get into it. What is dimensional analysis? So dimensional analysis is a really powerful tool that helps us to verify if equations or formulas are correct. They're also great for helping us figure out units when we're faced with something unfamiliar. So what we want to do is we want to ensure that both sides of the equations have the same dimensions. So what we mean by dimension is a unit of measurement. So for example, if you think of 2D, so two dimensional, we're talking about two measurements. So if you think of a rectangle, it is 2D because it has a length and it has a width. So if we had a 3D shape like a cuboid, it has three dimensions, which will be a length, a width and a height. So when we talk about dimensional, we're talking about the units that we use to measure. Now, we have to be really, really careful because there's going to be some tricks that happen. Sometimes when we start this, students feel like we're just working as an algebra equation. That's not the case. We have to keep going back to thinking about the fact we're in units. OK, so this method doesn't need exact numbers. It just focuses on the units. And like I said, it is so, so helpful, especially in your physics, where you may be given a formula that you're unaware of. Um, and you may be asked what the unit is and you may not remember. So dimensional analysis is a great way to figure that out. So just to be aware, dimensional analysis is not going to be a question necessarily on its own. Uh, we have seen like a half question standalone on the ordinary level papers. But for higher level, this is really just being stuck in as one part of a question and generally links to any topic we do. So it can be used to work on any formula that we have on the whole course. OK, so this is a lot in and we'll see that when we look at our examples. So before we do anything, I just want to give you some tips that will help you to limit errors when working in dimensional analysis, because although this is a very straightforward piece, this is something that students often really struggle to get fully correct. Silly things happen. And I can understand why, because we're working between variables and units. Things get confusing. And um, when you're in the stress of an exam, you can kind of maybe not be as focused as you would be in class. So here are kind of the main things I would always say to my students about dimensional analysis. So the first thing is know the difference between variables and units. So variable is the thing. And then we have the letter that stands for it. So, for example, a variable could be S for displacement. And then the unit will be meters. So what it is measured in. So the reason I'm saying be very careful for that is often we have variables that have the same letter as units. So think about mass, which will be M. And then the unit M means meter. So if you are looking at an M, you have to be very aware. Am I looking at a variable or am I looking at a unit? So what I suggest to make this easier is to have different colors for units. So maybe some color that you rarely use that you will just exclusively hold for your units. So, you know, your variables, when you're starting your question, you work in whatever your normal color is, usually blue or black. And then what I actually do for my units, and I'm going to do throughout this video, is I actually only ever put my units in in green. What that means is every time I see green, I'm very aware of the fact that I am now looking at a unit. I am not thinking in my variable. So it kind of changes the way my brain associates with our units. It gives it a really clear identifier. Like I am a very strong advocate for using colors and things like that in your work to really help 
to limit mistakes. So be careful adding the same units. Now, this is something we're going to see as we work through some of the questions that I have in this video. But often when we get into this, students do the units bit. The first step is usually fine, changing your variables to units. That generally goes off okay. What happens is then we get a, we, we get kind of caught up in thinking we now have an algebra equation, which we don't. We're dealing with units. So if you add two of the same units, you still have that unit. So for example, if I were adding two lengths, okay, so think of perimeter, right? It's adding four lengths. So if we talked about the units for length and for width, they're both meters, okay? That's our SI unit. And then if we were to get perimeter, it's adding the length and the width and then doubling it. So then we have to remember that actually, if I asked you what's the unit of perimeter, it's still meters. Even though we've added meters plus meters and then we've multiplied by two, my answer is still meters. So we're not going to work these units like it's an algebra equation, okay? In some ways we do, in other ways we don't. So we have to just be very, very clear about our units and we have to really think. You, you have to be thinking so hard while you're working through these. I am working with units and units. How will this logically work for units? So the last thing I'd say is we ignore constants for the same reason. So because constants only change the value of the number, it doesn't actually change the unit. We ignore constants. And some main constants that we might meet are going to be numbers themselves. And uh, they might put in like a K or a C to stand for a constant. Um, we could see pi. That's a very common constant. And it's one that can confuse us because we see a letter and we think there's something more going on. But remember, that Greek letter pi stands for a constant, 3.14159, on, on, on. Because that number is an irrational, it, ne it is a decimal that doesn't repeat and never ends, we use that pi just for simplicity, but it is a constant. And then I've put this in here as well, but again, we'll explore it as we go through. These are the things that have come up. So watch out for elements that have no units. And this is a strange one, and it's where we have ratio, so where we put one number over the other. So one example is E, the coefficient of restitution. Uh, sine, cos, and tan, go back to basics with sine, cos, and tan. So you're talking about putting sides over, like from a right angle triangle perspective, putting one side over another. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If that's meters divided by meters, you're left with no units. Same for cos, same for tan. And radians, now I'll talk again about radians a little bit more detail, but radians actually have no units. They are not a unit of themselves. So just to be very aware of that, that is the ratio comparing the length of the arc to the radius of the circle. That's the definition of radians. So they're kind of some really important ones to be aware of that can really catch people out. So let's just talk a little bit about our SI units. So um, I'm not going to butcher this French. My maths is most definitely better than my French, but this is what it stands for. And basically it's French for International System of Units. So if you go back, the French Revolution was a scientific revolution as well, um, which is why we see this in French. But basically our SI units are what are agreed to use throughout all science engineering internationally. So even in some countries, who maybe don't use the metric system. So think of like the UK, think of um, the USA. They would use like feet in, um, and inches instead of meters and kilometers and things like that. However, in science, we've all agreed to use the same. Okay, it's to ensure consistency across experiments and calculations. So most people are aware of SI units. So here are some of the main ones we see. So length is always measured in meters. For us, mass is kg. So be very aware of that one. It's a kilogram is our SI unit for mass. Time is seconds. And when we're working in questions, we tend to have to bring our questions back to SI units for our formula to work. So in your log tables, Starting on page 65, we actually have all the SI units you could ever need, probably way more because it goes all the way on to page 71. There's a lot there. They are in alphabetical order. 
uh, sculpture of the symbol and you can see then at the end we have some Greek letter symbols in there. You'll see that sometimes symbols are reused. We have the Irish on the left, we have the English um, quantity name on the right and then it has the SI unit. So just to be aware, so I've just pulled this from page 67 and I want to look at force. So the dimensions may not exactly always be the SI unit. In a lot of cases they are when it's nice and simple. However, in the case of force, the SI unit is N newtons. But for our dimensional analysis piece, we want to break that Newton down further. And we run into the same issue when we have work, um, so work, our energy, our power, all of these have SI units that can be broken down further and in a dimensional analysis question need to be. So we're going to explore them first, how we can use formula from our course to figure out what the breakdown or what the broken down dimension of the SI unit is. So let's explore the dimensions for force. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my formula for force. Remember, all these formulas are in your log tables as well. So your log tables are doing all this hard work. Now, in dimensional analysis question, by the time you get to your leaving cert exam, you don't want to be reliant on having to look up these formulas. Um, but I suppose I'm just telling you, if you're stuck in an exam, they're there. Majority of students will have these formulas very quickly. They'll have them in their head. We use this so much. So the formula is F equals MA. So as I said in my top tips, as soon as I start working with units, I change my color. So I'm going to change to a green. That's what I use actually throughout. And um, that way it keeps it very clear. I suggest if you're changing color, change to the same color all the time. It, I promise it will help. So for us, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to break it down into our SI units. So the left hand side is going to be Newton's. And then that should be the same as mass because m our red m is m for our variable m mass but the unit then is kg and then a for acceleration meters per second squared i'm going to use the slash and positive powers here if you use sm m s negative two that's absolutely perfect um it is exactly the same thing so actually, because we're multiplying kg by meters per second squared, that means our Newton is actually kilogram meters per second squared. So that's as easy as it is to get your dimensions from your SI unit if they can be broken down. So like not all of our dimensions can. So kilograms are just kilograms. Meters are just meters. But Newtons, uh, we're going to see joules and watts. They can all be broken down further. So let's talk about work then. So let's start with the formula for work. So work is measured in joules, but although that's the SI unit, for dimensional analysis, we would like to break that down further. So for us, work is equal to force times displacement. So F for force, lowercase s for displacement. So let's start with our SI units. Again, I'm changing to green. Work is measured in joules. That should be the same as now. Force is newtons, but we've just worked out on the last slide that newtons is kilogram meter per second squared. In an exam, maybe you'd have to do both of those together, but I'm going to go straight to kilogram meter per second squared. To, sorry, times displacement. The unit for displacement is meters. Now, what I suggest to do, and this is why I like to use the slash here, it just gives us a slightly better understanding. If you if you are happy with your indices and you work better with indices, absolutely go for it. Um, I like to write my formulas <clears throat> like this when they are a fraction. So we have kilogram meters per second squared because kilogram multiplying by meters per second squared, we can write that as kgm all over uh, second squared. We're multiplying that by m. Watch out when you're writing your formula or when you're writing any fractions that you leave the space for any, I say whole numbers, in this case, just a letter on its own to be over one. So really getting good habits with how you write your fractions and you'll find this much easier. So this way we align any number without a denominator, so with the denominator of one, with the top line, and then the bottom line is aligned with the one, which helps us with our multiplication. So to multiply fractions, we multiply across the top, so top by top, 
and bottom by bottom. So you have the over one there. I rarely put in the over one. It's just the space to have it. That means the top line becomes kilogram meter per meter, sorry, kilogram meter by meter, which means meter squared per second squared. So that means my joule is kilogram meter squared per second squared. And if by your exam, you know joules and force and all off by heart, that's brilliant, absolutely. But the less you have to learn off by heart, the better. It's nice if you know you can figure it out in the question. It does not take very long. So let's talk about energy. Now, I suppose it depends how much you've done. So energy is the ability to work. That means we have the same units for energy as work. So if you wanted to work out joules, we've kind of already done it. But I am going to approach this as kind of a fresh question looking at energy. Um, I'm going to use the potential energy formula. You're welcome to use the kinetic energy formula. That's absolutely fine. Um, so I'm going to use E equals MGH. So E stands for energy, which now we go to our units, change our colour. That's going to be in joules. Okay, so I've written, just for us to get started, I've written it in words. In the exam, you can write that as J, no problem. So then the right-hand side is mass, which is in kg, times G, which is acceleration due to gravity. So G is our acceleration. So that's meter per second squared. And then H is our height, which is a type of displacement, which is going to be measured in meters. And then we just need to tidy this up. Again, I'm just going to write my fraction as meter per second squared, one over the other. And then we can see much clearer about our multiplication. So then we have K at the top line. I have KG. I can think of, again, put your ones there and then you're multiplying these together and you're multiplying the bottoms together. So that gives me KG meters by meters, which is KG meters squared per second squared. Again, if you are using your... Um, indices here as s to the power of negative two and then you just tidy up the two m's that's absolutely perfect if you find that easier go for it um whatever works best for you so the dimensions for power then so we have two formulas for power so i'm just going to look at both of them at the same time so either or will work OK, I want to show you that actually it doesn't really matter if we've multiple formulas for the same thing. The dimensions should be the same regardless. So power is work per unit time or force times its velocity. OK, so I'm going to just split these up. So power is in watts. So we'd like to understand well, what are watts in broken down dimensions. So the first one I'm going to do is work, which we've just worked out. So remember, work is measured in joules, which is kilogram meter squared per second squared and time is measured in seconds and um, if I used f times v so force times velocity force we worked out the first go it is newtons but that's kg meter per second squared times velocity meters per second squared so then this one on the left so for work divided by time breaking that down I'm going to write that as kg meter squared per second squared and I'm going to use the idea of instead of dividing by s, I'm going to multiply by 1 over s, okay? So that's working with the idea of instead of dividing by something, you multiply by its reciprocal. Reciprocal means to flip it. So that gives us kg meter squared over seconds cubed. Again, if you're kind of thinking, you know, I would prefer to work in like negative powers, that's perfect. Bring your s up. And that's going to give us kg meter squared s to the power minus 3. You might find that so much easier. And that is absolutely perfect. If you want to work with your negative indices, it, it really depends what kind of habit you're in. That's absolutely perfect. I suppose I'm looking at this. It's slightly harder. And if people approach this way, it's easier to get confused. So it's better to see it. So we're going to multiply across the top and across the bottom. Now, for the other one, the kg meter per second squared, um, times meters per second I'm just going to write those out as fractions that are one over the other giving it space and again multiply across the top and across the bottom kg meter by meter that's meter squared regardless of which way we do it we end up with kg meter squared per second cubed so don't be afraid of the dimensions uh, for SI units that can be broken down, understand that we can always work with our formulas to figure them out. 
So for ease, here are some um, variables and dimensions that we see a lot. So we see time, so S. Displacement is one we see a lot of. We have S, we have X sometimes, H for height, L for length, or for radius. They're all a type of displacement and they're measured in meters. Our mass then is our M and it's measured in kg. That's one to be aware of because a lot of times like we break our SI units are kind of as simple as it can be in kilograms. A lot of people might think, oh, is it meant to be grams? So kg, be very aware of that one. Mass is in kg. U and V, so we've met kind of initial and final velocity meters per second. Acceleration, we have A, we have G. We also have an F we can see in some of the questions that's been used. So meters per second squared. We then have force, which we've worked out. It's Newtons, but there are the dimensions. We have work, which is in joules. We have energy in joules. And we have power, which is measured in watts. And again, you can kind of see how a capital W for variable is different from a capital W of dimension. So you have to be very, very clear on when we have a variable and when we have a dimension. Okay, so let's dive into some actual dimensional analysis. We're going to be, instead of what we have done so far, which is kind of figure out our units, we're going to start checking. Does the left, are the units for the left-hand side equal to the units for the right-hand side? So I'm going to look at three different sections of the course where we have some key formula, which you hopefully, um, depending on where you are in your um, studies, hopefully you're familiar with these. We're going to look at the three, well, three main ones from uniform acceleration. We're going to look at two from circular motion and two for impacts and collisions. And that's going to give us a really good starting on dimensional analysis before we start into the actual exam questions. So uniform acceleration, let's start with the most basic formula. So that is V is equal to U plus AT. So that is meters per second. And U is going to be um, velocity, so meters per second, plus meters per second squared per, or sorry, times time. So in terms of maybe writing this in a slightly nicer, easier way, this is going to give us um, S squared times S. So this tidies up nicely. This S goes into this S once and leaves us with just M over S. So we have meters per second is equal to meters per second plus meters per second. Now, this is where some students go wrong. If you add meters per second and meters per second, some students would say we have two of them, but we don't because our focus here is on units. So basically, if I add something that is meters per second and I add something else that's meters per second. So think like let's do a really like let's put numbers on this. So if I have two meters per second plus five meters per second, my answer is seven meters per second. But what is key here is if you add meters per second and meters per second, my answer is still meters per second. So from a unit point of view, this right hand side is just meters per second. OK, we don't put a number in front of it. Constants do not matter in dimensional analysis. We are not doing this like an algebra equation. I know sometimes it feels like it is and sometimes we do treat elements of it like it's algebra. But when we add two things that have the same units, my answer is still just in that unit. OK, that's so, so important and that can lead to so many errors. Let's take a look at S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So S is displacement. So that's going to be in meters. Uh, U is meters per second times time, which is a second plus. We ignore any constants. OK, so that half doesn't have a unit. So it doesn't come into our dimensional analysis. We ignore it. So this is meters per second squared times second squared. So the half is gone. We ignore constant. Go back to the top tips that I had at the start of this video if you need to go back and kind of make a list for yourself of what you're checking as we're working through these questions. We ignore any constants. They are not part of it. They do not have a unit. So let's just make this maybe look a little bit better. So time seconds plus meters per second squared times second squared. Here they disappear, divide into each other and give us one. So we get meters equals meters plus meters. As with the last question, 
even though I'm adding meters and meters, my answer is just meters. So meters on the left, meters on the right. Again, focusing on the fact I'm saying I have meters on the left, on the right, I add meters and meters, and my answer is still in meters. My focus is on the unit, okay? This is not an algebraic equation, okay? So we have meters equals meters. Really common. This is why I'm looking at these formulas in particular, because these are formulas we're hopefully familiar with, that we know are correct, and we know the dimensions should match up, because if the dimensions didn't match up, these formulas would not be correct. So we need to be very clear that when you add two of the same units, my answer is still just that unit. Okay, I know there is a fourth formula, but I'm just going to stick to looking at these three. Let's look at V squared. So that's um, velocity meters per second squared. Be really careful about where you're putting your squared. Um, and this is why I like to kind of use the fraction more so than just the powers with the negatives because I think people using the powers with the negatives they're going to do this a lot quicker and be a, you know you're a lot clearer about what's happening if you try to use this way it can be confusing so that's why I want to show this so again we have a two two is a constant it does not have a unit so we ignore it and um, we have meters per second squared times s which is displacement which is meters so this is meters per second squared we also have meters per second squared plus meters over second squared times meters. And we're really getting conscious about how we line up these fractions. So squaring a fraction, you square the top, square the bottom. You then square the top, square the bottom. And here we multiply across the top. M by M is M squared over S squared. So we get meters squared per second squared. And on the right hand side, we have two of them added together. But again, we know that if we add two things that have the same units, my answer is simply those units. So meter squared per second squared. Um, we would never leave V squared. We would square root it to get our meters per second back. But we have validated that the left hand side units are equal to the right hand side units. So let's look at some circular motion formula. A lot of them are connected, so I'm going to just focus on our two force formula. And um, the acceleration is kind of built into that. So F is our force. So that is measured in Newtons. OK, and I'm going to put in my Newtons because I'm going to approach this like maybe we haven't broken down our Newtons yet. Our M stands for mass, which is kg. Or is our radius, which is measured in meters. And then omega squared. So omega is your angular velocity, which is radians per second. And that's going to be squared. Now, there's a few things that are going to happen here. So the force, we can do a little bit of an aside. So this is going to be F equals MA, which is the one that kind of helps us figure out the breakdown of Newtons. So that is kg meters per second squared. And that's going to equal kg um, meters. And I'm going to write this like this just for a second. So radian per second squared. So I have kg meters per second squared here. I get kg meters radian squared all over second squared. So we're squaring the top and squaring the bottom. Now it looks pretty close, but we have one little bit that is different on the right hand side. And that is our radian squared. And I mentioned this. I mentioned this earlier on in the question or earlier on in the video with my top tips. And I said to you, well, actually, radians do not have a unit. And you might think, but surely radians are the unit. But let's actually go back to our definition of a radian. OK, so here's my hopefully not awful drawing of a little uh, sector. So we have our angle here. OK, so imagine that theta in radians. OK. 
Actually, I'll change this to L. So we have it in general. So theta in radians is going to be the length of the arc divided by R. Okay, so that's our definition of radians. It is a way of comparing the length of the arc to the radius. In terms of dimensions, that's meters over meters, which effectively leaves us with no unit. So radian squared actually does not have a unit. So really, if we want to work with our omega squared, omega, the units, I should really put this in blue to keep track of it. So omega, the units are actually one over s squared. No, sorry, one over s and then omega squared is going to be just one over s squared. So that is s to the power of minus one. We ignore the radian piece. OK, if you take out the radian, you still need to put a one on top of the S to make sure the S is still in the bottom line. because we're still dividing by an S because it's per second. OK, so per meaning divide. But actually, that radian doesn't need to go in there at all. So actually, we have kilogram meters second squared is equal to kilogram meters per second squared dimensional analysis has confirmed that that formula is correct, which we know it is because it's one of our main formulas in circular motion. So this is a great chance for us to see how the radian does, how the radian isn't actually a proper unit in the sense that we think, but surely the unit is radian. It's a way we have of kind of putting a word on our angle to say that it's not measured in degrees, it's measured in a different way. We're basically saying when we say the word radian, we have compared the length of the arc to the radius, but actually it isn't really a unit. Or another way to think about it is if you break down radian, like we break down Newtons, it actually just breaks down to no unit or just a one. Okay, so just be aware of that. This came up in an exam and it caused a lot of problems. It was in the higher level 2023 exam and we're going to look at that question. And this part, the radian piece really did catch out a lot of students. So this is why I suppose we're exploring them with familiar formula before we go any further and look at questions that they ask in the exams where we're dealing with unfamiliar equations or formulas. So let's look at the other force formula that we tend to use in circular motion. That's F is equal to MV squared over R. So again, we're going to do Newtons this time. I'm just going to go straight to kilogram meters per second squared. And then we have mass, which is in kg. We have meters per second all to be squared. Really be careful about that. And then our radius, which is measured in, met in meters. So kilogram meters per second squared is equal to kg. And then this is meters per second squared. And then instead of dividing by that M, we're going to multiply by one over M. So instead of dividing, you multiply by its reciprocal. So this uh, right hand side becomes kg meters squared over second squared one over M. There is an M here on the bottom line. It divides into the top line, leaving with just M. And that gives us a final answer of kg meters per second squared, which is exactly what we have then on the left hand side. Nothing funny about that one in nothing like the radians piece, but it is really good to see it. Okay, so let's look at the two main formula from our impacts and collisions. So the principal conservation of momentum formula first. This again shows us a little bit about the adding of the same units. So we have M, which stands for mass, which is kg, U, which is initial velocity, which is meters per second, plus mass, which is kg, U, which is initial velocity of the second particle, which is meters per second. And then this is literally on the other side as well. OK, and then plus kg meters per second. So what we get is kg meters per second plus kg meters per second equals kg meters per second plus kg meters per second. And we know that when you add two things that have the same units, my answer is simply going to be that unit. So the left hand side unit is going to be kilogram meters per second and the right hand side is kilogram meters per second. We don't deal with constants and coefficients here. We, we ignore them. They don't mean anything to us when we're working in terms of our units. 
So don't work these like they're algebra. They are not. We are talking in terms of units. I'm using my green. So my brain is kind of clicked into that idea of I am now thinking in terms of units. And I know that units are going to work differently than if I was just adding variables like it was an algebra equation. So let's look at this one. So this one is our last one we're going to explore before we get into actual exam questions. But it's an interesting one because it includes the E, which is the coefficient of restitution. So we have V1, which is meters per second, take away V2, which is meters per second. We have minus E. OK, what is our unit? for e okay the negative think of that like a coefficient don't really care that it's minus okay so we're just focusing on the e so we can ignore the minus now for the e let's go back to maybe the more basic definition of e that we learn when we first start looking at impacts so that's like our single body collisions against like a wall or a floor or a ceiling and it's new velocity over old velocity there's a minus there as well in terms of a unit that means we're saying it's velocity meters per second divided by velocity meters per second which effectively means e is a ratio of two things and the unit is nothing or it's a one there, there is no unit effectively it's a like a constant okay it's a ratio the word we use for this is ratio and you would have met like the trigonometric ratios so a ratio means it's comparing two of the same thing and just giving us a number that is a relationship rather than something with a unit, okay? So E compares two, effectively velocities, and then with speed, think about it in whatever way works for you, but because you're comparing the two by division, you're not gonna get a unit. So E actually doesn't have a unit. So this right-hand side simply is going to be our U1 units, which is meters per second minus meters per second. Now. This has a second interesting thing in here, which is the fact that we have a subtraction. But again, we are thinking in terms of my units. So if I have meters per second and I take away meters per second, my unit is still meters per second. Let's put a number on this. Five meters per second and I take away two meters per second, my answer is three meters per second. My focus is on the units. If I have two things that are subtracted and they have the same unit, my answer is still that unit. This does not give me zero because if I subtract two velocities, my answer is still a velocity, okay? It is still meters per second. So be careful that adding doesn't include a coefficient, if we subtract them, they will not go to zero. So this is another place where it'd be very easy to end up getting a little bit, I suppose, to getting a zero equals zero and saying there's no units. But that is not correct. Again, think in terms of units. If I subtract two things that have the same units, my answer will have those units as well. So let's take a look at some exam questions. This first one is from the Ordinary Level 2023 paper. It's question five and it's part B. So in the algebraic formula, um, sorry, the algebraic formula below are written in terms of momentum. So that's one we don't see a lot that the P used for momentum, but it is the letter that we do. It is the variable for momentum. We have mass, which is M, displacement, which is S, and time, which is T. Which of the formula, X or Y, have the same units as the units for velocity, which is meters per second? Use dimensional analysis to justify your answer. Okay, so let's start with X. And let's see what happens. So X. So we have the square root of 2PM over ST. As soon as I go to my units, I am going to, as soon as I go to my units, I'm going to change to green. Now, here's something. If we have a power, so that's a square or a square root, because remember, square root is a power of a half. We do keep that. That's not the same as a coefficient. It's not the same as a constant. That is basically um, applying a power. So that is important. We do need to keep those. 
So momentum might be something that you're not as familiar with. So momentum is mass times velocity. So in terms of our units, that is mass kg times velocity meters per second. Uh, we ignore the two on the top because it's a constant. So we have kilogram meters per second times mass, which is kg. And that's all over S for displacement, which is M, and then T, which is time, and the units are seconds. So in terms of what we have here, that is kg times meters per second times kg. And this is just ms here at the bottom. This gives us kg by kg, that's kg squared meters per second. I'm going to write it all over S and then instead of dividing by MS, we're going to multiply by one over MS. And what that gives us is an M on the bottom and an M on the top. So this gives us the square root of KG squared over S squared. And if we square root that square root, the top square root, the bottom, that's KG per second. That is not correct. So this does not give the same units as velocity. Let's try y. So then y is the square root of 2ps over mt. Okay, so we have done kind of a lot of that hard work already because we've done the 2ps. So the 2ps, the 2 we ignore, p is momentum, which is kg uh, meters per second times oh sorry we did 2 p.m this time we've done we have to do 2 p.s so s is displacement so that's in meters all over m which is mass kg times time which is s you can see how we have a lot of s's and m's but they mean different things and this is where the change of color really does help because I know when I'm writing in blue that they are my variables. So S stands for displacement, M stands for mass. When I write in green, I know I'm in units. So M stands for meters and S stands for S stands for seconds. So it just helps to train your brain. And I know I often say this and students don't do it, but I do promise it will make these questions so much easier. Okay, so then this becomes kg meters per second times meters and then we are instead of dividing by kgs we're going to multiply by one over kgs we've a lot going on so we have a kg at the bottom and a kg at the top and then we have the square root of m squared over s squared apply the square root to both of those and that is meters per second squared so this one has the same units as velocity. So this ordinary level question, it just has given us something completely random, not connected to any other parts of the question. We are just working with kind of momentum, mass, displacement, time, trying to check its velocity. It's not a formula we're familiar with, but we're just applying our dimensional analysis. So let's take a look at the 2024 ordinary level question. This was question two, part seven. So VII. Now this is in the middle of the question and it is one that um, has provided us with a formula that basically we've already done, which is wonderful, but we'll do it again. So we have S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And that gives us S displacement is meters, U is meters per second, time is seconds, plus I ignore the half, acceleration meters per second squared, and then time is seconds squared. And we can show that that's true. I just want to show for this one, because we've already done it, how this would kind of work if you're working with our um negative power. So if you put in ms the power of minus one and ms the power of minus two and then s squared. So this gives us m s to the power of minus one s to the power of one you're multiplying them that gives us s to the power of zero which is just one 
plus. Here we have s squared, s power minus 2. Again, you add your powers, you get just 1. Yeah, m is equal to m plus m, but we know when you add two things that have the same units, your answer is still just those units. So my answer is m equals m. So we've done what we've asked. We've used dimensional analysis to show the units on either side of the equation are equivalent. So some people find those powers, the negative powers, so much easier. And they, they do. They, if you're good with them, if you understand and can work with them well, if your indices are strong, absolutely. But just if you're struggling with indices, you might prefer the fractional method. If you do decide to do the fractional method, there is a lot more to it. So let's take a look at the 2024 higher level question. It was question eight, part B. So the algebraic formula below is written in terms of force, mass, displacement. Let's do a bit of highlighting. Um, oh, force, which is F, that's fine. Mass, which is M, displacement, which is S, and angular velocity, omega. Okay, so we have a few bits and pieces to think about. So force, our units are Newtons, but if we want to do a kind of a more breakdown, we can use F equals MA. So in that case, that's going to be kg meters per second squared. Our mass, that's fine. That's going to just be kg. Displacement is just going to be M. Angular velocity. Okay, so if we want to look at our angular velocity, it's radians per second however we've already talked about the fact that radians actually isn't a true unit it is a ratio so this angular velocity is going to be one over s so if we take what we have here so 4 fs over m omega squared and start plugging in our units we ignore the four any constants are ignored our force is kg meters per second squared s is our displacement which is measured in meters that's all over m which is our mass which is kg and then i have one over s squared so let's tidy this up and do a little bit of work with it. That gives me kg meters per second squared times meters, which is in the top line. And then the bottom line is going to be kg over s squared. So this is going to give us kg meters squared over uh, sorry, let me space that out a bit better. Kg meters squared over second squared. Instead of dividing by kg over s squared, I multiply by my reciprocal. So I bring it up, I multiply and I flip it. We then get kg, which divides into kg, s squared divides into s squared. And I'm left with the square root of m squared, which is simply m. And the question was, use dimensional analysis, show this formula has the same units as the units for a displacement. And that would be our m. And we have, we've done that. We have shown that. So that's our m. So not a bad question, but it did have that piece on radians that could trick us. It did throw in a four that could trick us. There was a few bits and pieces. So I'm just going to do this question again, just with the powers. Um, just to make sure if you're kind of working it that way, that you're happy how that works. So we have force. So that is F equals MA. So that's kg meters per second squared, mass is still just kg, displacement is still just m, angular velocity is radian per second. However, we know radians are not a true unit, so it's just s to the power of minus one. So then when we come along, we have 4fs all over m omega squared. We can then plug in, ignore the four, we get kg meters per second squared, times s which is meters all over mass which is kg and omega squared which is s the power of minus one squared okay so then when we do some tidy up here the top line kg m by m is m squared s to the power of minus two all over kg s to the power of minus two that's all in a square root 
kgs disappear, our s to the power of negative 2 disappear, that's going to give us the square root of m squared, and that simply gives us our m. So working with those kind of um, s to the power of negative 2 and negative 1, they are much nicer if you're comfortable with working with your indices. It does keep it a lot cleaner. You're not messing around with as many fractions. So we have done what we're asked. This does have the same unit as the units for displacement, which we said was m. So let's take a look at the 2023 deferred question. Uh, it was question one part BIV. This was slotted in and it was linked to the previous part. So use dimensional analysis to show that the units for the expression you divide in to in part three are equivalent to the units for period. Now, um, I've put part three up there on the right. So period is going to be our T capital T and the units for that is going to be our seconds. Okay, so that's how long it takes. So a capital T, it stands for a period, time period, and it is still measured in seconds. So we're trying to prove that the right hand side equals the left hand side really and truly in this case. So let's work with the answer. I've put it there in the box so we don't have to go back and do that. So we have L cos theta over g. Now, obviously, in the middle of a question, you've got a lot more context here, but there are some nice little bits that could catch, I say nice little bits, things that could catch you out. So the first thing is we ignore any constants. So that is two, but it's also pi. We ignore pi. The reason we ignore pi, it is a constant 3.14. So I go straight to my square root. L is the length, and that is a measure of displacement. So that's m. Now, Pause is a ratio, and we we said that. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna explain that um because I talked about it brief, briefly with my top tips, but I just want to kind of remind you. So imagine here is my angle theta, and I know it's simplistic. Think of it as a right angle triangle, but they can always any sine cos tan can be shown as a right angle triangle. So we have our hypotenuse, we have our opposite, we have our adjacent. So cause of the angle is going to be, so, so if you use sock, ka, toa, uh, whatever way you remember, if you use your log tables, you're basically going to end up with two sides over each other. So what that means is in terms of our units, we have the adjacent side, which is meters, divided by the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse, which is in meters, which means cos doesn't have a unit or it has a unit of one. So it is effectively a ratio. And we always call them our trigonometric ratios. So that means that we're not, we're not putting in anything for it. So that could be tricky. So then we go to gravity, which is meters per second squared. Or if you prefer, we can do ms to the power of minus two, whichever way you want to work. If you want to do ms minus two, I, I, I'll do one way and then I'll do the other way. So meters per second squared. So in terms of that's meters, and instead of dividing by m over s squared, we're going to multiply by s squared over m. So instead of dividing by the fraction, we multiply by our reciprocal. So that's just going to give me the square root of s squared, which is s, which is exactly what we want to show. So QED. If we want to use our um, meters per second minus 2, the meters here, you can see they disappear. And then you can bring your power, of, or you can bring your S to the power of minus two, that is a minus two, it just all got caught together. You can bring the minus two above, which gives us just S to the power of minus two, sorry, S to the power of two, which just gives us our S, so it's the exact same. So if you wanna work with your negative powers there, you get the exact same answer. So let's take a look at the 2023 question. It was question three, part three. This was the first time that um, we had been asked dimensional analysis in an actual exam. We had a sample paper up to this, but this is students' first kind of meeting of it in an exam situation. And it, do you know what? It was quite a tough little question. Um, there was a few little bits and pieces that really could catch you out. There's kind of about three different things here that were tricky. Now, just to give a little bit of context, because we're not doing the full question, this bottom line here was a length. And that is not clear from this question. 
because I haven't given you any context around it, but that bottom line is a length. Okay, that's important. So it would be, you have to be kind of engaged in the whole question and understand you've pulled this through, okay? You've worked with that um, that number earlier on. So you should have, if you're working through the question, a good idea that that's length. But just looking at it, you wouldn't know that. So I'm going to give you that piece. So we want to show that um, that expression has equivalent units for omega. So this was another little kind of tricky piece. We know omega is radians per second. However, we've talked about how radian is a ratio. So that means it is one over second, or if you prefer, s to the power of minus one. That is our dimensions for omega. We do not use radians. We use it in calculations to identify that we are using that ratio. That's what it's for, but it isn't truly a unit. So if we take our square root here so we have g tan alpha over 3.5 plus 4.3 sine alpha the top line becomes g acceleration due to gravity meters per second squared tan we talked about cause in the previous example tan is another one if i work with tan so tan of theta is opposite over adjacent and they are both um lengths so in terms of my triangle it's meters over meters so these are gone so this is also a ratio so there's two so there's two bits already where we've had to deal with things not having units but we have to be aware of that this is all over a length which is going to be meters okay so that's going to be meters on the top meters on the bottom that gives us uh basically one over s squared which is going to be square root of top, square root of bottom, one over s, which is the which are the units for um, omega for our um, angular velocity. If you want to work in terms of your negative power, so our m's disappear. We have the square root of s to the power of minus two, which is just going to be s to the power of minus one. So we can see that that all works there, no problem. Okay, so a lot going on there, but. Again, if you know all those little nuances, if you know all those little tricks, this kind of question is a nice question. So the last example in this video is coming from our sample paper. It is question six, part VI, and it is thrown into the middle of a question. And it says, use dimensional analysis, show the unit for the expression you de derived in part five, which I've given to you in the orange box, are equivalent for the units of velocity. So we're trying to prove that this is going to give us meters per second. Okay, so the formula was the velocity max is equal to the square root of mu g or, okay. And they, what we want to do, there's one thing here we haven't seen yet. So let's fill in what we know. So velocity, it doesn't matter if it's a min or a max or if it's nothing, it's just a velocity, it's meters per second. We have the square root. Now mu, mu is interesting. So mu comes from the formula friction equals mu or. And mu is called the coefficient of friction. So mu, if we rearrange that, is friction divided by or, which is reaction. Now, think in terms of our units here. So friction is a force. Reaction is a force. So again, what this is, is it's a ratio. It compares two forces. So our coefficient of friction might be like a half or a third. Like it doesn't come with the unit. So there are no units for mu. It is a ratio. This, the whole idea of dimensional analysis and being able to work with it is really good because it helps you. If you're stuck, if you're kind of caught with something here that we haven't looked at for dimensional analysis before, with your understanding of the course, because it has to be linked to the course. If with your understanding of the course, you should be able to break down and understand what are the units or maybe it doesn't have a unit and that's absolutely fine. So mu has no units because it is a ratio. Our gravity, a g is in our acceleration due to gravity times or which is our radius, which is m. So that is meters per second. This cleans up to be meters times meters. So meters squared per second squared and then square root that, square root the top, square root the bottom and we're left with just meters per second.